for traumatic brain injury, we actually uh, coming up with a pivotal clinical trial to go to the FDA. But the VA has accepted this technology to treat traumatic brain injury. I'll talk a little bit more later. I published this about three weeks ago. I'll touch on, on this very briefly. Uh, this is how we deliver the light. It's all about delivering light, near infrared light that can penetrate into the, the skull and into the brain, and then it activates some me mechanisms. So that's how it works. You may wonder in origin how light can even do that. Light actually does that, particularly in the near infrared uh, spectrum. So it does some activation. The, the outcomes can be traced back to the very pathophysiology of traumatic brain injury. It's actually very complicated. I have to say, this doesn't cover everything. I know what I haven't covered, but this is very standard in the literature. Uh, mitochondrial dysfunction, reactive oxygen species, and oxidative stress, axonal degeneration, um, you know, and growth inhibitors, autophagy, liposomal pathways dysfunction, the, um, sorry, lysosomal. The lysosomes are organelles in the cells that, you know, uh, that have to clear this debris that's not wanted in the cell. There's apoptotic cell death, there's programmed cell death, neuroinflammation, excitotoxicity, axonal damage. I named this because in each one of these, and even those I haven't covered, they will, you will find studies of photobiomodulation actually uh, giving good outcomes on each of these aspects of pathophysiology. So whether in, in uh, culture cell study, animal study, and even human study. So um, for more details, just go to the paper. Now, how does it even, you know, how does it even manage to cover so many aspects? It's because it, in this standard model of photobiomodulation, it, it acts on a very fundamental level on the mitochondria. Here is, is shown uh, when we use the light beam of, we say red and near infrared light between 600 to 850 nanometers. It works on the electron transport chain actually. And then it releases nitric oxide, it does uh, increases the ATP and does a few things. Uh, it, you know, it, it activates some transient reactive oxygen species that spur uh, recovery action and so on. So this is, uh, uh, is a standard model when someone, a scientist come up and to report it and talk about photobiomodulation mechanism. This is very often presented. Uh, I would say it hasn't covered, again, everything. We don't know all uh, that's behind the outcomes, but the outcomes can be proven in clinic, clinical study. Now, the question is, okay, does it really work in a human being? So this is something we're doing together with, Bay, with Baycrest Hospital in Toronto. They're affiliated to the University of Toronto. Uh, this is the MRI scanner that we use. That is the engineer with a laser on his forehead and one into his nose for intranasal effect. Now, if you look at other brain, other form of brain stimulation and see what the outcomes are uh, in terms of this imaging, bowel imaging in MRI, fMRI, uh, I don't think you will see this level because I actually did a research on what has been done in other kind of stimulation. So this is very profound. You have one on the forehead, one into the nose, and you see a global response from the brain from the third minute onwards. Um, it has to be of a certain power density, a certain set of parameters, but the point is the brain really does respond in real time. This is actually real time imaging. And you can also look at it from the perspective of EEG brainwave forms. 
Someone asked me about CTE today. Uh, this was published a few months ago by Dr. Nazer of Boston University on four uh, ca cases of four retired uh, NFL of players. And they've all shown signs of CTE. I highlighted possible because you don't really know whether a person has CTE until is dead and contributing his brain and get, you know, go through an autopsy and so on. But they all improved. And um, someone that we work closely with, actually now a professor at the University of Utah, uh, is perfectly normal. He's, you know, he's, he's working as a professor there. Then, we can also look at another waveform, alpha, which is 10 hertz. And we, uh, I was involved in this particular study. The lead investigator is Professor Chow, who is also a professor of radiology at the University of California, San Francisco. So this was the case of a professional hockey player who had problem repeated you know, traumatic brain injury. Um, he had to drop from the first team to, I think, reserves and, and done. But at 10 hertz, we were able to show to MRI, MRI uh, that there was evidence of regeneration of brain matter in mainly in the hippocampal area and the thalamus. So photobiomodulation has the effect of neurogenesis. And that could be a reason why a number of people are recovering. I covered this also in the, in the paper I mentioned. Now we have a pretty big project going on at the University of Utah. They found that it has, uh, actually this, this project has been going on for like three, four years. And they've had so much success that the, we've uh, jointly decided to create like a standard of excellence using photobiomodulation to treat many brain injury, particularly in sports. So you can look at the symptoms of TBI in depression, PTSD, uh, rehabilitation, sleep, reaction time, and then on grip strength and, and so on. Um, the outcomes for these 49 subjects were significant. So that is, um, there are, I think some of the papers, this was actually of the poster presentation. So some papers, you've seen them, they're pending publication or being uh, reviewed right now. There is an ongoing study. Uh, now the data is being analyzed at uh, Boston University, looking at 20 subjects in a single blind study. And uh, VA actually did over 100 subjects a few years ago under this particular project. Uh, in the Center for Compassionate Care Innovation. So the, actually, based on this, they have approved using photobiomodulation to treat traumatic brain injury. I hope you'll hear more about it this year after COVID and so on. And uh, just like to thank very briefly the people who are involved with us, too many. <laughs> this is it. Well, thank you very much for listening.